where poems came from. They came, I suppose, from London, or somewhere in England. Heaven, most likely. Wasn't God, after all, a bit chalky, the grey suit and silver hair, the underwear somewhat neglectful? Wasn't he the sort, in his spare time, to be spinning out rhymes on the prettiness of things? Journeys they claimed, over hills and vales, through moonlit doors, down the last furlong from Ghent to Aix. But they reached us, too heavy for words, with chalk dust. They were chalk dust and the tired eye. They were trembling knees when all went speechless at the eager end of Friday. They were paper and they were words, books of them yellowed in the classroom cupboard, the place that poems truly came from. Yet truly they came. Behind my back, they talked to me. Though I heard no words, their coming was not to do with words. It was in the laughter of dogs, way across the snow. I could smell it in freshly painted rooms, taste it warmer in the cream than the milk. In the tricks that skies played with stone, I found it. I found it in my body when first I discovered its emptying joy and wanted, afraid, to share it. They came to in forgotten things, in the thing wholly strange that I recognized. And one March day they came in a farmer's voice as he sat drinking tea, explaining to himself, trying to explain the world to himself but not in the words of his explanation, not from the names did they come. For there's a space in things, a gap between the words for it and a wave's movement, its infinite motion. As I stood, a baby at the sea's edge, I began to wail for no misery, no joy that I could name, lost, quite lost for words to be facing there our world's great noise, to be facing there its silence.